Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Romero. Welcome back to Journey to VR. This week I'm going to be using the Motion Graphics Toolkit to help me animate some objects in my scene. So what we're going to be looking at today is how we can go ahead and create a sort of effect on the wall where the audio is making the wall actually move. So we're going to kind of make a voxelized version of the wall and kind of extrude that out a little bit and then have those, those extruded blocked versions of the wall sort of get animated using that Motion Graphics Toolkit inside of Maya 2017. So let's hop in there and check out how to do that now. Cheers, everybody. All right, so here we are inside of Maya checking out the reality captured environment. This is, um, this is actually a low polygon version of that environment. So you can see that we've been going through and sort of reverse modeling um, that original raw data to get a nice tight low polygon model out of it and then reprojecting the textures back onto that. Now this is still very much an early work in progress. Um, it'll get better as the journey to VR continues, but you get a sense of sort of where we're going. We're gonna get this really kind of nice tight little um, polygon model out of it when it's all said and done. Now what I want to do is I want to take this back wall that you can see here and I want to animate that guy using the motion graphics toolkit. I actually want to kind of get a voxelized version of that wall that's going to be moving back and forth to an audio file. So there's lots of different ways of doing voxelization inside of Maya. I'm actually going to manually build this up because I want pretty precise control over where the polygons are as well as um, I want the texturing information to come along for the ride. Now, this is pretty much a prototype or a work in progress as far as the way this is going to move, but I still thought it was super cool to share with you guys. So first thing we're gonna do is go up to Mesh, Edit Mesh, Add Divisions. We'll bring the options up for that. We'll add five and two to kind of get that guy squared out. And then we'll just drop this down to two and two and reapply it. So now what we've got is we've got this polygon plane that's been kind of uh, tessellated out into nice quads that are looking pretty cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get in, this chunked out so that each face is individual. So if I went in here and I said select face and grabbed a chunk, you know, I could always run that, um, that command inside of Maya, which is the extract command. Um, which would then break that off into an individual chunk. But for this example, I want each face to be extracted. So what I'm going to do is double click on one face to select everything at the component level. And I'm going to run the extract options with separate extracted faces turned off. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to go in here and I want to throw this switch that's saying keep faces together. Right now when we did the extract, nothing's happened because all those faces are still stuck together. But as soon as I click on the on button and switch it to the off switch, now each individual face, if I go back in here and grab it, you'll notice has been extracted out. So it's not, the vertices aren't merged together. So when I move this face, it's not pulling all these other edges, obviously. So that's awesome, right? The problem is this is still a single polygon object. It's still just wall one. So what we wanna do is we wanna take each face now that isn't merged into its neighboring um, faces and separate them out. How do you do that? Well, it's really straightforward. You just run up to the mesh separate command it's going to go through now and you'll notice that we now have a whole bunch of individual polygon objects made up of essentially what each face is. Now there is still a problem with this and the problem is when we're using the motion graphics toolkit, it's very specific in the order in which you select things. That becomes the object ID number and that object ID number works in conjunction with the audio node. So Zero object ID is going to be the base, the highest object ID is going to be the travel, and then anything in between is going to fill in that audio spectrum. So I don't want my, um, my polygons to just be randomly base over here, treble over there, maybe more base over here. And right now, if I just grab this list of objects, you know, these polygons and start selecting them, you can see that they're just randomly all over the place. They're not in order. So how do you get them in order? Well, it's all done on, on the order of selection that you do, right? It's pretty straightforward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manually select these guys in the order that I want them. And I want it to be base in the center, kind of cascading out like a spiral to treble on the outside edge. So it's a bit of a manual process. I'm basically holding down my shift key and just walking through the polygons and selecting them in the order that I want them to go. So I'll just crank through this really, really quickly. Awesome, so now that I've got those guys done, I'll just hit Control G to group them. And then we can just unparent that group so that it sits there at my root level. And you can see that we've now got a nice spiraling pattern as I start to manually go through this list. Now the numbers are all messed up. So easy way to fix that is just to grab the top, then shift select down at the bottom, go up to the rename options right here, make sure you're on rename and just call it something that's meaningful to you. Um, I'll just use my initials. And you can see that we now have a hundred faces that are named and in a grouped order. So now when I select these guys and create a motion graphics network out of them, they're going to be ordered properly. Really straightforward, very easy to do. So let's go ahead and turn off 
the display of that wireframe. And let's go ahead and look at our next problem. So the next problem is, if we grab one of these guys, you'll notice that each individual face here, its pivot is down here at the origin. So if we grabbed a whole bunch of these guys and scaled them down, they're not gonna scale around their local axis, right? They're gonna scale down to the origin, which isn't what we want. And that's exactly the way the Motion Graphics Toolkit will also move these. It's going to assume that it's pivot over here. So how do you fix that? Well, you'd think, oh, that's pretty straightforward. I'll just modify the pivot. So you'd say modify center pivot. And now the center pivot's where I want. So if I scale these guys down, it looks like it's going to scale properly. The problem is it actually won't work correctly with the Motion Graphics Toolkit or with like a rigid body solver in Dynamics. Same exact classic problem. The issue is the Motion Graphics Toolkit is not going to look at where its actual pivot is right here. Um, it's going to look where its local axis is. So if you go ahead over and look at the attribute editor for this guy, you'll notice that you, you really need to get that local axis zeroed out, right? So if we, oops, not limit information. If you go to pivots and you look at the local space here, you can see that it's not zeroed out at all. So the local space is, is not going to work properly. So how do you fix that? Well, it's actually really, really easy to fix. Um, now in 2017, we added the ability to bake the pivot. So what, what's that mean? You just basically grab the objects that you want, go up to modify, bake pivot, bring up the options for this, pivot and orientation, position orientation, we'll hit apply on that guy. So as soon as I do that, you can see that now all the local axes are zeroed out and the objects now actual world position is correctly um, listed in the transform. So that's exactly what you wanna see. You wanna see the local pivot be in, different than the world space and be different than the, the um, transform attributes for that guy. So pretty straightforward, but that's all you need to do to fix it um, so that the motion graphics toolkit will work with it properly. If not, it would have all these, it would scale down to the origin. Like if I ran a transform through it or a, uh, something like that, or, or a scaling operation, it wouldn't scale around its individual axis, it would scale down to the origin, which would, would totally look horrible. So you don't wanna have that happen. So that's the key to, to fixing that is to center the pivot first. So you say modify center pivot, and then you say modify bake pivot, and then you're all set and the motion graphics toolkit's going to behave exactly the way you want. Woohoo! So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna give these guys a little bit of volume. I'm gonna grab DTO1 through DTO100, Shift right mouse click, bring up the extrude, and just give these guys a little bit of a uh, little bit of depth there, and that, that looks pretty cool. So now what we've got is we've got, you know, we've got these little boxes, we've got everything looking cool, and I'm just going to delete my history, and we're going to create a new motion graphics network out of all 100 objects. So how do we do that? Well, you grab this guy, scroll down to the bottom of the list, shift select, add to 100, jump over to the animation, and say mash. Let's create a new mash network. So Maya's gonna go through, and by default, what the distribution's done is it's linearly distributed 100 of these guys across the x-axis. That's not what we want. We want them to be in the initial state. So as soon as we put on initial state, they're, they're obviously in the right spot, but they don't look right. And the problem is that it's basically taken ID number one. It took the first one, and it's replicated that 100 times and filled in my wall. Now, obviously, that is not what we want. So what we want to do is just add an ID node on there. So as soon as we add that ID node on there, now each individual um, cube gets its ID number correctly positioned. It's going to go to its initial state, and it rebuilt the wall for me. So this is no longer my 100 polygon cubes, this is now a MASH network that's ready to be modified, you know, animated using all the really awesome Motion Graphics Toolkit tools that Maya offers. So let's just throw something on there really quickly that's easy um, to see. We'll grab something like, I don't know, we'll just throw a signal on there and we'll just hit playback on this guy. So, you know, they're kind of moving around, they're doing some fun stuff. You can see, obviously, if I start to do that scale, they scale around their local axis, right? They're not scaling down to the origin down here, which, which is what would have happened if we didn't do that fix with the modify center pivot and the modify bake pivot. So that's a very key step here. So then obviously if we wanted to, we could add in something like a, you know, a fall off object to make this effect happen when the objects are, you know, inside of there. Scale that guy up, scooch this dude over here. And you can see, obviously, as I move this around, you know, it's going to affect what objects are getting, uh, what objects are getting shoved in there. One thing that I love to do, let's just go to FX here and go to solvers. I'm going to add onto my shelf um, interactive playback.
because I think interactive playback is super cool. So with interactive playback on, you know, I can sit here and move this object around and you can see the effect of, of that kind of signal node disturbing those guys. So that gives you the basics of what that voxelized wall that I made kind of looks like as this object kind of comes in here and plays around with it. Now that's that's all cool, but that's not really what we want to do. Let's just go ahead and we'll drop down the, um, the scale of that a little bit and just for fun, I'll drop off the, um, the strength. We'll just zero that out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add onto this that audio node. So pretty straightforward, we'll say add an audio node. We got a pipe into that guy, a techno loop, which is really, really cool. So that's gonna be nice. And then the next thing that we need to do is add audio into the time slider. So when you add the audio into the audio node, it doesn't actually play back. You have to still add that in through the Maya proper import. So you say file import, and if we jump over to here and jump in this guy, and here, audio, and grab that loop. Another thing to keep in mind um, is for the audio to play back, you need to set your playback speed to real time or else it will not play back. So with that done, we can jump into our audio node and it looks like what it's doing, let's play. Okay, so it's moving, but it's kind of distorted. So let's look at what this audio node is actually doing. I believe what it's doing is it's scaling in Y, which is not what we want to do. We want to scale in X. We'll scale in X by, I don't know, 50 or something like that. So what we've got now is we've got bass in the center, treble on the outside. Now, I had 100 cubes in there, so I want to make sure that my bands, the number of audio bands that are going to move objects, is set to 100, right? So um, what's that do? That means all the objects are going to move. So if I put this down to 10, I'm only going to get 10 audio waveforms only moving 10 blocks, right? So I want 100 blocks moving, put the max bands to 100. Now, the bass is a little strong there in the center. Let's just go ahead and give it a little bit of filtering. We'll do a moderate filtering on that guy. And I'm going to just punch the treble up a little bit more. And you can play around with the low, the low step here. So if you want it to look a little poppier, you know, you can start to get these really kind of cool, fun effects happening. And obviously, if you wanted to, you could go in here and start to give it, you know, some spin. So we could say, let's spin that guy 3,000 around Z. Craziness. That's kind of cool. So that is basically it. Really, really fun, super easy stuff to set up inside of Maya using those motion graphics toolkit. The really the key thing here is to make sure that your, your playback speed is set to real time so that you can hear the audio playing back down, down in the time slider of Maya. Make sure that when you're making a bunch of objects that have been turned into individual separate objects, that their pivot has been properly sorted out so that the local rotations are zeroed out and their position in world space is accurately represented in the transform node. So those that center pivot then followed by the bake command basically settles all that stuff for you. So that's pretty much it for this week. It's still very early work in progress. I'm gonna be animating this guy for the next few weeks here. Next week, I'm actually gonna be talking about animating and using, um, animating in 360. So, you know, when you put a headset on, What's the difference between looking at you know, the Maya viewport? It gives you a pretty good view of what's going on, but when you put a headset on and you have this 110 degree field of view and you can look behind you and things like that, how do you animate for stuff like that? So you know, I'm gonna be playing around with more animation next week, going into doing some of the stuff with the graffiti next week. So make sure you tune in. If you're watching this on Vimeo or on YouTube, make sure that you go back to the Journey to VR on the area blog. There's lots of great material on, top, on that. Um, there's lots of awesome written articles also. So please make sure that you go back to the area, to the Journey to VR blog and check out all the other content that we're creating that, that kind of goes along with this. So thank you again so much for your time, everybody. Have a great weekend. Cheers.